Oh, you can actually go through this little building and get really close to you know, a Quonset hut. Come over here. Cool. And this looks like an early model with that Razorback. And I know new skins when I see new skins. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are new skins. Like, look at this. That is brand new. Flush riveting, and those are big rivets too. They're, they're huge. Countersunk. And apparently this aircraft could take a lot of, a lot of um, damage, a lot of battle damage. A very colorful tail in this one. I'm getting better with this gimbal. It's got a really neat little control and you can just kind of buzz it up and down real easy. Left, right. And those were like 332nd rivets. And it's a metal aileron. There's no fabric on this plane. Oh, that engine looks like it's been run. And there's something electric that's been added to it in a really weird way. Like, it's almost like somebody's put a motor on this thing to spin the propeller. Somebody's done something really weird. Because you see that a box? That clearly can't have been in there. It's a mystery. Eight guns in this thing. Instead of the usual six, this thing's got eight. The engine's huge. Republic's aviation Alexander Cartavelli intended the P-47 to be a high-altitude interceptor. However, the massive seven-ton jug, first flown in May of 1941, it turned out to be an ideal low-level fighter bomber. It was used to harass Axis ground forces and destroy supply lines throughout Europe and the Pacific and to fly close air support for Allied forces on the ground. On June 6 of 1944, D-Day, 19 of the 35 U.S. fighter groups based in Great Britain flew the jug. Two of European... Two of the European theater's top-scoring Allied aces, Major Francis... Kabreski at 28 victories and Captain Robert Johnson at 27 victories. They flew the, the P-47. The museum's aircraft is the oldest surviving example of 15,677 Thunderbolts built, the all-time production record for U.S. fighters. It served as a trainer throughout the war. Following the war, the museum's P-47 saw service in Bolivia. In the 1970s, it returned to the U.S., where it was restored in the markings of Colonel Bob Bassler, who had commanded the 325th Fighter Group in Italy. And at this museum, all these uh, models in the cases going around here, they're all done by one guy. And it's basically all the airplanes of World War II. And there are some super remarkable ones in here. Like, he has made airplanes where no model kits existed like the guy makes these things from scratch
post in the way, but nice shot. The Thunderbolt. These things were considered pretty indestructible. They always came back. There's a fighter plane called the Jug. It took, had eight 50 caliber machine guns, which was a lot.